Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. God bless you. Welcome to True Vine Apostolic Fellowship in Jesus' name. Amen. If you see Sister Jeanette over here, <laughs> she is uh, right now, she's trying to figure out how to get us into Facebook. We logged off. Everything was fine on my phone, uh, but then we logged off and um, that was a mistake. And that was a mistake. Oh, we didn't know that. Yeah, we logged on. To, I logged on to some other. Uh, I logged on to some other uh, Facebook account. Yeah. We we're helping some folks out, and uh, it kind of messed up. Yep. So, Amen. All righty. Well, good to good to see everybody. How was your How was your day, honey? Really, really, really busy, and then I couldn't go to the store because of the storm. Mm. So you know how when. A mom can't go to the store. Dad suffers. <laughs> no then snacks. We didn't have the um, the dinner. I'm sorry, everybody suffers. <laughs> we didn't have the dinner that I wanted to make, but we had. We God still provides. Hey. <laughs> and I have to just be content and not be upset because you know I'm used to managing and doing things mm -hmm. in California weather, yeah. which is always good. The wow. tarps kept blowing off the hay, oh. so our cows are eating yeah. wet hay, yeah. which is bad. Yeah. So That's we, good. But we can't complain. No. The cows don't complain too much. No, they're just happy they're to so eat. Good. Amen. We have good cows. Amen. Well, listen, God bless you. Praise the Lord, everybody. Good to see you on live stream. Good to see you Amen. here on Zoom. Uh, if, if you have anybody pinging you and saying, hey, where are you guys at on Facebook? Yeah. Well, we're just having a little issue with that That'd right now. Amen. So let's go ahead and, and let's pray together. Amen. Let's go ahead. Amen. Lord Jesus, we bless you. And we thank you, God, for thank this time that we Jesus could be together. So Lord, we thank you for the rain which has come to the earth, God. Hallelujah. Lord, you know that we need it so bad. And we thank you, Lord, even as we try to dodge raindrops and try not to step into puddles and, and try not to wreck the car. We thank you, God, that you give it to us. And Lord, we won't complain one bit. And Lord, in our life, when there is rain, we ask thank you, God, you, that God. you help us to have yes. an equally uh, joyful attitude, Jesus. Lord, teach us every moment. Yes, Lord. And Hallelujah. God, we thank you in Jesus', in Jesus name. name. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Amen. Good to see everybody here. Uh, still working out the kinks, trying to get everything going. Amen. Mm -hmm. And uh, but everything Let's is start fine. With your question and then I'll make trouble. Okay. So the the title of this lesson tonight is "Restore Your Family Altar." Restore yes. your family altar. Now listen, I'm always excited to have a lesson about the Bible and to talk about the things of God. But I am super excited here because I believe if we can get a hold of this concept that God wants us to have an altar in the home, Amen. then we, I've always said, I, I, pastor, uh, I pastor leaders of homes. I pastor the shepherds of the homes. And with Amen. that in mind, a shepherd has to always be teaching his sheep in the same way that I am teaching you all. Yes. Uh, the leaders of the homes uh, are to be teaching their sheep. Yes. And they are to be leading. And in order to do that, you have to have a true north. And that true north is the altar of God. As a matter of fact, if you notice in the temple of God, the, the altar was on the north side of the building. Was it? So when we talk about true north, we're not only just talking about magnetic north, mm -hmm. where your compass points, mm -hmm. but true north was where the altar was. Amen. In Jesus' Amen. name. Isn't that exciting? That's awesome. That is because it always gives you direction, right? It always tells you which way to go. So the question here, the icebreaker question is this. What do you know about the family altar? What is your opinion about this subject? What do you know about the family altar? Um, in the Bible or personally or either? Because um, that's kind of vague. Whichever makes me look better. <laughs> no, seriously. Is, are you family? Family, family altar. Mm, 
Well, I think that you and I have always, you know, when there was a huge problem, and even for more, you know, kind of normal problems, we've often, or you've often said, come on, let's go and let's come and let's pray together. Um, especially when the kids are very, very ill, et cetera, then we say, oh, come on, let's pray. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and, and when we have those moments, mm-hmm. um, for me, it gives me a lot of security and makes me feel like, you know, because you're leading in that way, mm-hmm. and I've done it too, and you're not there, obviously, every parent should do it. But when we do it all together, mm-hmm. um, it's given me this that security that we're trusting in God. Mm-hmm. We, we know we're worms, we can't do this on our own. And we have such a great God, it's a surrendering. Mm-hmm. And that to me is, is a beautiful part of how we live we're not perfect mm-hmm. but i think for main the major stuff like when we had my mom at the home and all right. that uh, we did that of course so much more because we needed god you know for every decision mm. right yeah um, plus i think we were just a little bit less busy at that time we had slow we had so to, we had yeah. yeah so we had to make sure that we had that altar that place in the home Amen. And we're going to talk about busyness distracting us from the altar. Let's right? we, have, yes. we have a problem uh, in life in general when the altar is, we're distracted from it. Amen. Right? So, yeah. So what is your opinion about this? Study? Well, I told you my opinion. I think this is really exciting because it gives us direction. Yes. And it gives us men, it gives us a purpose. Uh, nothing is more dangerous than a young man without purpose Mm. because he will find a purpose, right? And us older guys, eh, not so much, but the problem is, is that without purpose, we become rudderless, we become directionless, and we tend to blow with the wind. And that is dangerous. Oh, like just depending on yourself. Exactly. Kind of grabbing at decisions. Exactly. Amen. I, exactly. Okay. Exactly. All right. So um, let's read this scripture here. It's Psalm 145 and verse 4. Psalm 145 and verse 4. It says, One generation shall praise your works to another and shall declare your mighty acts. Wow, that's powerful. How does it, what does it mean that one generation shall praise your works to another generation? I think it, it means exactly what we're talking about. It taught, it's exactly has to do with having an altar in each one of us. We need to have an altar in our home. If you're a single person, you need to have an altar in your home. So let's go ahead and read this. It says God does. <coughs> excuse me. God designed the home <coughs> as a castle that protects each member of the family from the influences of a hostile world. Every castle has its strength in the walls that surround it. The family altar raise, raises the protective walls of our home. How important is it that we transmit to our children the ability to worship God? You know, uh, if you look in the Bible, in the King James Version, there is not one time that the King James Version talks about building bridges. Not one time. And you'll hear people say, hey, we just want to build bridges here. We want to build bridges there. And I suppose in general, that's, you know, there's some value to that. But really what we see is that God talks about building walls and about building hedges. And then within the walls and the hedges, we have God's reign and we have God's instruction. And so folks, don't worry about getting out there to see this and to see that and to join up with this this worldly uh, organization or that worldly organization. Um, You don't need it. I can remember when we were trying to get our kids into 4-H and we went to the local 4-H and uh, it was, and and, you know, it's, it's all us country folks, everybody's conservative. And, and, you know, it was, we thought it would be a great idea to get our kids involved in the farming stuff. Well, guess what? The fact of the matter is 
we tried, we went there and we found it was so disorderly that to get our children into that, even for the benefits, would have taught our children to be disorderly themselves. Uh, are you hearing what I'm saying? In other words, we, we, we need to take care of our family first in terms of creating a shelter, amen? Okay, so it goes on to say, they did not grow up and automatically as his children and automatically to the desire to worship arises in their heart. Rather, it is the opposite. So we teach them. And the best way is through the family altar. We can say in a few words that the family altar is a time when families gather to do at least three things. One is read the Bible. These are super important, folks. We, we need to write these down. Read the Bible. Present our needs. The, number two, present our needs, gratitude, or con or confessions, present our needs, gratitude, or confessions, and pray to God together. That's all it means to have an altar in the home. It's not complicated. It's not something that you should fear. It's not something you should declare that you are uh, inadequate to do. Only the pastor can teach. Only Brother Gabe can teach. No, every home. Every home should have an altar. Somebody say amen. All right. Okay, discovering the enemy. It says here, the church is at war for the growth of the kingdom of God on earth. And the battles we win or lose are fought mostly at home. The phenomenon of family disintegration and the, and the progressive extinction of the family as God established it is precisely the lack of his presence in the homes. Folks, do you think you we would have uh, children of 12 years old declaring that they're, that they're gay? That they have attractions for the same sex? That they're involved even in heterosexual sex? Or that they're transgender? The, the entire problem with our youth and with people uh, de all of a sudden declaring these non-scientific ideas like there's a like there's a thousand or 58 or whatever different numbers of sexes it, it's it's unbiblical it's a confusion is what it is and here's the thing they're redefining what it means to be a man redefining what it means to be a woman they're redefining what a family is. And you may say, well, what's the harm in that? Well, the problem is, is that these redefinitions, uh, a man means that what you declare it is. There was some actress in Hollywood who got divorced today. But you can't call her an actress anymore because she declared that she's a man. And so, and so I saw this article. God, forgive me. I saw this article, it says so-and-so got divorced, right? And so I, I just kind of read it because I had heard this person had declared themselves to be a man and it was a woman, right? That, that beeped. Um, they declared themselves, they, they're a woman and they declared themselves to be a man. And I read the article and they went out of their way probably like 15 times to say, he said this, his marriage, him that all these things declaring things that don't even make sense i had to constantly remind myself who we were talking about because here's the thing when you redefine something as meaning anything you want it then means nothing right amen well i think i think there's a lot of confusion in the world and so that's confusion why that's why we need to make sure that we are have our kids rooted in the in the word of god so that they know um what the lord says about who that is mm -hmm. so um who we are in christ so you know i'm a woman what does that mean mm -hmm. you know titus 2 I'm a, or i'm a single woman what does that mean I, 
you know, they don't have that point of reference. It's just very Yeah, sad. that's exactly what I mean. If yeah. in other words, if you can so, if you can redefine the word husband to mean anything you want it to be, yeah, if they don't then it means that. nothing. I, I give you no information. If I tell tell you uh, that so and so and their husband yeah. were divorced right. or are coming to dinner, have I told you anything about what the the word husband means? No. I haven't told you anything about the people who are coming. Right, especially in and language is to convey meaning, right? Amen. And so God gives us direction, He gives us meaning, He gives us understanding by using language. That's why language is so important. It's why they the, the media and it's why academics and it's why all of them want to obliterate the meaning of husband, wife, man, woman, mm. he, she. Right. They, them, all of those things. It's a problem. It yeah. is a severe problem. Okay, so can we move on? Okay. Um, okay, but the family that prays together stays together. So every apostolic home should be a training and preparation center. Our homes should not only provide food for the family and hospitality to visitors, but also generate the spiritual resources to be spiritual warriors. Mm -hmm. We need to be spiritual warriors, folks. We need to fight for the things of God. Hallelujah. Amen. If we don't, where are we going if we're not fighting for the kingdom of God? And I don't mean fighting with, with fists and, and, and swords. But taking a stand. But yeah. taking a stand and yeah. fighting for meaning. Okay, it's because the apostolic home aims to establish the kingdom of God on earth that the enemy attacks it. The enemy wants the domain of our home and to achieve this, the first thing he does is open a hole in the wall of spiritual protection of our house, which is the family altar. Folks, that's what, that's what the enemy wants to do. He wants to attack the family altar. If he attacks our altar in our home, we have no direction. Well, we still make it to church though, right? We still uh, basically do the right things, but what if something happened to rock that family? What if I passed away? What if you passed away? What if we lost our home? What if those things happen? That drifting that we're doing because there's no family altar will cause the whole ship of our home to be lost. Yeah. Now we just lost our brother-in-law. Yes. We just lost our brother-in-law. I mean, he's like, what, a year and a half older than me maybe? Mm -hmm. A year and a half older doing everything for God. Yes. Uh, uh, doing a tremendous work for the Lord. And when he died, his family had an option. He was the anchor of that home. The family had an option. The boy, one of the boys could have gone right into, uh, right into just doing business, right? He's an accountant. Oh yeah. Uh, the other, uh, the, the girl could have gone here. The youngest son could have gone there. Yeah. The wife could have had a boyfriend yes. already. Yes. All these crazy things. Yes. But you know what they're doing? They're staying true to the Lord. Hallelujah. Yes. They are still serving God. Amen. The, the oldest son is, is now an assistant pastor for that church. Amen. Yes. And, you know, the, the, the happy new year that my nephew, my youngest nephew did, and blessing everybody and saying, folks, we, we need to, to bless the Lord. Yes. Amen. In the mid, I mean, his dad was dead for what, four days, five days? And yet they stayed on course. Why? Oh, yeah. Because their home had an altar. Yes, yes. No altar, no direction. Yes, amen. And you take out the captain, which way is the ship going to go? Yes. It needs to go in the direction of the Lord, but only if you have an altar. Amen. Folks, oh my goodness. That's so important. Okay. The first attack of the enemy is to make believers think that they are not sufficiently prepared. 
to establish the family altar. Folks, so many people say, I am not able, right? Well, you're, you're able, to, you're able to, to build homes. You're able to hold a job. You're able to uh, drive to work every day. You're able to do this. You're able to do that. You're able to do so many things, and yet you find yourself inadequate and insufficiently prepared to establish a family altar. Mm -mm, no, it's not true. Every one of you can establish a family altar especially you men in the homes, you can establish a family altar, okay? This is accentuated when the children reach the teen or youth years, but the key is not, is not to, quote, know enough, but the willingness to learn together. And especially for you with young ones, right? With uh, people ask, how did you start homeschooling? And my wife, she was overwhelmed. She said, how am I going to do this? I said, can you stay one step ahead of a six-year-old? Right. right? Can you stay? Can you, if you've got nine, ten-year-olds, can you stay one step ahead biblically for, for eight, nine, ten-year-old? Uh, yes, you can. You absolutely can. And even teenagers. The key is not to know enough but the willingness to learn together. God gives us the grace to build the family altar. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Producing in us not only willingness, but also the power to do so. This yes. is where the power of the Holy Ghost comes in. Amen. And haven't we been talking about that? Right. All the time. Landmarks yes. and promises. Yes. Landmarks of the past. The Holy Ghost on the day of Pentecost. The Holy Ghost in us. When we uh, first spoke in tongues, uh, the liberation of when we, when we were baptized in Jesus' name and the promises that God is going to hold us up. Mm -hmm. Amen. You've got it. He'll give you the power. Okay. Another attack of the enemy is to generate more and more consumerism in our family. Mm -hmm. Here's where we go. Where we were talking about that earlier. Parents have to work more and more outside the home to cover increasingly large expenses. Many live in such a hurried, busy, and tired life that their family altar has been completely mm. abandoned. Yeah. Now, here's where we were talking about earlier when we were talking about the, the distraction that we get, that we can be distracted by the, the things of this world. I'm not even talking about um, evil intent, mm -hmm. right? Just the fact that we get distracted, isn't it true? Amen. Yeah, um, I know that we can easily forget, you know, we forget sometimes doctor and dentist appointments. I've forgotten the dentist appointment before one time. Mm -hmm. um, we can forget important things if it's out in the back of our mind. And so when we fail to keep God at the forefront, mm -hmm. even write it down. Like mm -hmm. um, one time I went to you and I said, you know what, Stephen, um, can we have communion? Can we do the Holy Supper? Mm -hmm. yes. And so I'm also making another point. It doesn't always have to be your idea. You know, no. just like going to the park saying, honey, you know, we, the kids and I, we really need a trip to the park or let's go take the kids somewhere. We kind of all need to kind of mm -hmm. regroup. Right. Same thing with the altar. I can easily ask you, you know, can you lead us in a prayer tonight? Um, this particular teenage child is struggling and if we all get together and pray mm -hmm. and that that child doesn't have to know like I don't want to make it obvious but if we could just pray for faith pray for whatever it is yeah. everybody to grow stronger then we'll we'll accomplish that you know right. what I'm saying so yeah. so definitely keeping it on top writing it down Friday yeah. not not getting distracted yes staying on it oh, okay yes you're you're talking about being distracted, yeah. Yeah. And I'm saying there's some practical things. Oh in yeah. Case we yeah, do get absolutely. distracted. Sure, sure. Write it down. Mm -hmm. You know, tell your husband ahead of time, or if mm -hmm. you're not going to be there when you would be out of town, I had to do it, and it right. was. It's and ladies, if your fine. husband is not there, do it. Right, you can you can do it for your family. Take you can leadership. lead your children. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yes. Here's the other thing. Um, we can have distractions. Right, we can have distractions, but the problem is, 
is what if we get satisfied by those distractions, mm. right? Yeah. Because it's fun to do this and to go there and to do that. And, and, uh, and especially when you're young and you're trying to build something for your family, you know, mm -hmm. which is a noble thing. It's a good thing. Right. But you can get so distracted by those things. It, it becomes your point of satisfaction. Mm. And we've got to be careful. Amen. Amen. Okay. Solomon affirms in Ecclesiastes 10 and 8. He says, he who digs a pit will fall into it. And whoever breaks through a wall will be bitten by a serpent. And a great part of the attacks of the enemy are due to the heads of the home opening doors into their castles to him, allowing the enemy to enter with all kinds of bad influences through television, internet, uh, secular music, non-Christian literature, etc. <clears throat> through these open doors, Satan ransacks the health, the harmony, and the spiritual peace of our families. May the Lord rebuke him. Folks, husbands, you have the key to what is in your home. And you know, perhaps you grew up with all kinds of secular distractions, but why would you put those in front of your kids and allow those things in the house, right? Why would you allow sensual movies to make your sons and your daughters grow up so fast? Yeah. And not good and not in a healthy way. So what would you say? Um, I don't know if I'm on a rabbit trail. If someone said, well, my kids need to learn about sin, you know, anyway. No, the, well, the Bible says that we should be simple to sin. Yes. There right. We should be simple to sin. Yes. And wise to that. That is good. That's and wise to that, which is good. Thank yes. you. Yes. Amen. So simple to sin and wise to that, which is good. Is God in God other God. words, we need to in those walls to have all of the purity and innocence. Amen. They'll learn in time. Our kids did, even if we homeschooled and sheltered mm -hmm. them, um, we explained things our way. And of course, yes. we have friends. And so, you know, kids just naturally talk about things, especially girls, mm -hmm. I feel like. And then um, I we knew that, right. but it's okay. We, mm -hmm. we explain things our way. Yes. You know, when it's time. Right. Well, here's the other thing too. Our home should be a sanctuary for all that influence. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of pressure in this world for us to conform to a particular way, right? The world says, eat, drink, and be merry, Yeah. right? Um, it says for us to be immodest. It says for us to be greedy. It says for us to be sensual, right? But if we provide a place in our home, Mm -hmm. not a place a, 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 a portion of our home but if we place our home as a place of peace and a place of refuge from all that stuff guess what our little girls won't think that they have to be uh sexy to get a man mm -hmm. amen if mothers if you are if you walk in holiness right if you walk in all those holy and modest things your daughters won't feel that they have to be something different than you Mm -hmm. If you're always straining against that, what are you telling your kids that you hate it, right? Uh, if, if, you, if you are straining against that, then your sons will want something else. Right. And same with the man. If, if a man is always um, looking for entertainment rather than being with the family, that, if yes. he's not focusing on, because there, there's only a season and let then me, your kids get older yeah, and they're gone. So right. well, let me tell a story. Let's invest. Yeah. Remember, well, when we lived in Stockton many years ago, gosh, 15 years ago, something like that. Anyway, I turned on Spanish TV because we went to a Spanish church. I really wanted to, you know, keep hearing, you know, the Spanish language, because I, I, I have a hard time hearing it sometimes if people talk fast. Right. So mm -hmm. turned on the Spanish TV, started watching the news, mm -hmm. and our girls were little. Yeah. And if you're going to be a news presenter in, in, uh, on Spanish TV, number one, you got to be real light skinned, right? Mm -hmm. That's number one. But number two, if you're a woman, you have to dress very provocatively. Isn't, do you remember that? Mm -hmm. So she was cooking dinner and I'm watching the news and I'm trying to listen hard. And my wife comes over and she goes, 
what are you watching? And I said, uh, I'm watching the news. Real innocent like. And she goes, no, okay. you're not. <laughs> <laughs> no, you didn't. You're fine. She goes, okay, if you you want your daughters to dress like that, you want to teach them that that's what you're looking at? And I went, and you know what? That's the last time I watched um, Spanish TV news. Mm -hmm. And matter of fact, we don't, we don't even, we have a TV in our house, but it's not hooked up to an antenna. You know, I think it's really important what you're saying is that yeah. I help you and you- She helped me that day. And you're helping me. <laughs> so if we mm -hmm. allow, what, what about the, the husband and wife? Because I think we, we talk a lot about marriage yeah. in, in these um, uh, sessions. And I think, because it's so um, needful. Absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> and needful. young people that are watching can also learn from this. But what do you think about if someone says, no, don't tell me what to do. How how would a wife or a husband deal with that? You say, no, you're not going to tell me. Pray it down. Yeah. Pray it Pray down. Pray it down. Yes. Pray it down. Because here's the problem. You know, I think you I think you should be forceful in saying, hey, listen, here's the problem here. This is what you're doing. So right. you shouldn't sugarcoat it. You should definitely. And I think you know what you told me was was absolutely correct. Fine. You want your daughters to dress like that? You want to show them that that's what's important? Well, I think it was very overdone. I don't think I was being like jealous or anything. I think I was, I was probably no, you stunned. Were, no, you were. Yeah, I was shocked. <laughs> well, I mean, I was a little shocked too. But yeah. anyway, listen, here's the deal. Yeah. But you were very, very clear. Mm -hmm. And you were very, very righteous. Yeah. And so you laid it out for me. Sure. And I just changed my, I was available to change what I was doing right then and there. I think part of it was because I knew that basically I was in the wrong. Sure. Okay. And that's not always easy to admit, you know. Yeah. And you did. So, but here's the thank thing God. there are some times when people are stubborn, and I think that yeah. you have to pray that down. Yes. And you, you have to say, Lord, Lord, you basically, you have to hand them over to the Lord. Yes. Amen. And the Bible shows us, Paul. Paul handled, he handed uh, uh, Alexander the coppersmith. He handed him over. Hmm. There was somebody else, I forget his name, uh, but he, he, he said explicitly in the scriptures that he handed this brother over to Satan. After he excommunicated him from the church, he handed him over to Satan. Why? He, because he sent him over there in order, is that what you want? send them over. Mm. Now, of course, we don't hand people over to Satan, right? I mean, unless you've got some apostleship going, I don't know about, but we, we pray to the Lord yes. and we say, Lord, you handle it. And you know what? God will deal with our hearts yes, amen. in a way that, hmm. that we can't through nagging and yelling mm -hmm. and, and um, not keeping the peace, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But at the same time, we definitely have to tell the truth right so tell the truth to answer your question tell the truth and pray it down amen, amen? sound good all right so it says here in item three raising the family altar okay deuteronomy 6 verses 6 through 8 and these words which i command you today shall be in your heart you shall teach them diligently to your children and shall talk of them when you sit in your house when you walk by the way, when you lie down, and when you rise up, you shall bind them as a sign on your hand, and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes. Amen. Heads of home, you need to be teaching in your house. It doesn't have to be complicated. We'll go into what it takes. Mm -hmm. But God has given you a place in your home to teach and to lead yes now my wife provided me in that in that mexican news uh example she provided me an opportunity to lead amen to lead yes. by example right right but it, sometimes you got to pick up the book you got to mm -hmm. pick up the book remember what did we say we said read the bible Right. present our our testimonies our needs mm -hmm. our gratitude mm -hmm. our confessions 
And then three, pray together. Yes. It, it doesn't have to be complicated. No, even a short um, going over a chapter in the book of Psalms, say. Hang on, wait really a minute, not even a whole chapter. How about just a, a few verses? verses? Yes, that would a few be verses plenty. that captured you. Mm -hmm. You don't have to give a full on Bible study, especially mm -hmm. if the kids are little, they can only endure so much. Mm -hmm. And when we were first doing our family time with the kids, we would let them hold toys or color, etc. I wow. remember, don't you remember at first when I would get really mad when <laughs> I would get in. I was, yeah, I was new. We're me. so zealous. For I was so zealous God. for the things of God. I would get annoyed when four-year-olds couldn't sit still. And then I just said, honey, you know, you, you know, you have to let people understand. You're not trying to be mean. I wasn't being mean. No, but you were not raised around a lot of little kids. You, you didn't no. have cousins and little baby cousins. No. I did. So I understood, even if I'm the youngest child, cousins and yeah. nephews and nieces, I had around. And so yeah, I just couldn't I understand. understand why kids couldn't be still. Yeah, your English is like. <laughs> I guess, I don't know. Yeah. My dad was like, sit still. When my dad mm -hmm. said sit still, that yeah. was it. He didn't, yeah, he just did it. <laughs> if you were two and my dad Times sit still, different. you sat still. Times are different now. <laughs> we, you know, kids can wiggle and it's forgiving. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so here, and this is to fathers. Deuteronomy chapter six, we see, he talks so much about frontlets and he talks about binding things on the arm and that's how Hebrew men pray. Mm -hmm. They have phylacteries with the word of God on their, on their forehead. They have, uh, they bind leather straps when they pray. These are men, these, these are what they do. They assume these priestly roles. And so this is written, especially to men. Men, we have to lead. We have to teach them diligently, it says here. What would you say to someone who doesn't feel qualified? Like, well, I'm not there if, yet, or I'm not good enough, I'm still struggling. What well, you if, you're, if you feel that way, then give me a call, right? If you, if you well and truly feel that way, give me a call, I'll talk you through it, right? Yeah. I think too, what would help is if the wife would say, well, I'll help you. I'll, I'll get the scripture. I'll mm -hmm. look for it or I'll download something from the internet. Okay, Very but hang easy. on, but hang on first, first. I'm I would just, practically. yeah, well, I'm trying to be practical too. Yeah. So my, my point is simply that let me talk you off the ledge. Oh. Let me tell you what God has you appointed wanna, you for you. teach someone. Yeah, okay. and that's if you just forget it. Right, I, I just don't have enough. Give me a call, talk to me, right? But I think first, if you just get two scriptures, read through the Bible, mm -hmm. pick, find something that you understand, mm -hmm. something that excites you and touches you, and you get those things and, and you sit everybody down, you lead them in prayer, you read those two scriptures, you tell them what it's about, and you say, let's pray. Can we do that? I think we can all do that. And I think, here's what happens. What happens is if you establish a schedule, well, let, let's read ahead. Okay. But establish a schedule and it'll catch fire. Watch this. This is the time when God is calling us to account and asking us to be brave and to make a decision on this important matter. Even though the scriptures do not provide specific instructions on how to do it, we can say it is not very difficult to carry out family worship. First, our family devotions need not be long. Perhaps 15 or 20 minutes will suffice, at least initially. It is important to consider the age of the family members. We just talked about that with little ones, right? It is best done on nights of the week when there is no church service or friendship group meeting. The ideal is to have one or two fixed days of the week and to give full priority to family altar these days. It should not be canceled unless there is an emergency. The family altar is basically the same as the meetings of friendship groups with the difference that the number of participants participants is reduced to the family. No outsiders participate. Now, this isn't because we're having secrets, 
but it's because we want to create a, an intimate family dynamic. We want this, we want our children and our wives and our husbands to feel this is our family and this is where we can retreat to. We strengthen ourselves and then we go out. Amen. Okay. What if initially a family member refuses to participate? It is important to start with those who can. So let me just let me just qualify this. If somebody is living in your house, they do not have the option. Fathers, the kids do not have the option. They need to be in that place, in that family altar. Don't you agree? Mm -hmm. Right? Amen. I, I know that when we explain to our children, no matter the age, that in this home, you know, like Joshua said, as for me, mm -hmm. my house will serve the Lord. They will quickly understand the severity if you explain it as such. And you say, do you want um, us to, you know, go to ice cream after? There are so many things that you can do as an incentive. Yeah. And not to for bribe ones. them. No, but if you're having bribes a, work. Maybe you just got converted and all your family, now you never did this and now you're trying to. Yeah. And you got, you know, maybe an older teen that doesn't want to. That's what I'm talking about. I, I think I think bribes work. And I and I think they're biblical. And I'll and I'll explain why. Okay. That God gives us all blessings. Yes, amen. And we're trying to lead little little pagans, right? Mm -hmm. Our the pagans our that we love. Pagan self. Our own little pagans. <laughs> no, our own pagan self too. Trying yeah. to get it under subjection. Right. So we're trying to lead them to the Lord. Yeah. Right. And the, if they don't understand the goodness of God, right, you're just you're just cutting in their day. So offering them a reward for for being good is fine. It's yes, amen. it's not bad. No. So I I don't have a problem with it, right? Your mileage may vary. You you may not be yeah. into that, but I I don't see anything wrong with it. You know, um, what if you have a a relative or a friend living in your home? That's an adult and they don't want to come out. I mean, what would you say? Are they staying the night? Because <laughs> if you, I'm, if you, I'm if you live in it as if they are. No, I mean, if you've got your feet under the table, you yeah. need to be there. Yeah. I mean, come on, this is our home. Uh, let me put it to you this way it's not that you're trying to be a tough guy. No. But it's that you're saying this, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And if somebody is partaking of your goodness your, and the, God's provision and God's provision, shall fear him. Yeah, yeah. then, then they need to, to be at your table. Yes. Anything else is ingratitude and, irreverent. you know, and, and it's irreverent. Yeah. Okay. So here we go. A sister started her family altar alone. Although at the beginning it was hard for her, afterwards she could feel the Lord's support. He honored her efforts by gradually bringing her family to accompany her. Now listen, uh, if, if, if your man doesn't want to start this, if your husband doesn't want to start this, then you can go ahead and start yes, this. Hallelujah. But here's the thing. You should always honor him, right? Because at some point in the future, he will be taking this thing over. And I'm not talking about a Christian man, right? I'm not talking about a Christian man. I'm talking about a non-Christian man, right? He 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 should be, um, you know, he should be carrying this out, right? And and if he's non-Christian, this will draw him into the fold. If he's a Christian, it will remind him of what his duties are. Because here's the thing: men should be leaders in their home. Isaiah chapter three and verse twelve says this. As for my people, children are their oppressors and women rule over them. O oh, my people, they which lead thee, cause thee to err and destroy the way of thy paths. This is a judgment on the people of Israel. And when this was going on, when this judgment was happening and, and Isaiah was prophesying over the, uh, over the people with this, this is what was happening. And we see, we see, children being oppressors now all these black lives matter um rallies a lot of them are being held by, uh, are being done by young people they they are oppressing others in these rallies 
and, and through their violence. Antifa, violent, young people, they're running this whole thing. And it's not a good thing. And when women are the leaders in the homes, it's a problem. It's a problem and it is a damnation. It is a condemnation. Men, we need to rise up. And men, if you will not rise up, you are in rebellion. Let me just say that. Men, if you do not rise up and lead your homes, you are in rebellion. It's really simple. Ah, let her take care of it. But you know what? God didn't, God did not design them for that. The Bible says they are the weaker vessel. The Bible said that Adam should sweat in the heat of the day in order to bring bread home, right? Now, I understand if somebody's hurt or, you know, somebody's, uh, Ill. somebody's ill or they're, but, but the problem or the, the thing that they're trying to get us to, uh, the, the Lord is trying to get us to understand is that men should take leadership of the home. And so unless, uh, unless somebody broke your jaw and you have, you had your jaws braced up, you should be speaking the word of God to your, to your family. Otherwise, it is a reproach to you. Amen. Amen. All right. So Genesis 22 verses 1 through 14. Uh, let's go ahead and read that. Can you pull up Genesis 14? Or excuse me, 22. Genesis, is it 22? 22. Oh, here we go. Genesis 22 and 1. Okay, and it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham, and he said unto him, Abraham, and he said, that means testing, and he said, behold, here I am. <clears throat> and, uh, excuse me, and it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham to do, oh, here we go, and he said, now take now thy son, thine only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah. And offer him up there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains, which I will tell thee of. Okay. Oh, come on. And it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham. Oops. I'm sorry. It's a new. It's a new Bible. Bible verse program. Okay, and Abraham rose up early in the morning and saddled his ass and took two of his young men with him and Isaac, his son. And clave wood for the burnt offering and rose up and went into the place which God had told him. Okay, and then verse four, then on the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar off. Next verse. And Abraham said unto his young men, Abide ye here with the ass. Why did I make this so hard? Well, it's not configuring right. Okay, so, oh, here we go. Uh, and Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it upon Isaac, his son, and he took the fire in his hand and a knife, and they went both of them together. And Isaac spake unto his father and said, my father, and he said, here am I, my son. And he said, behold, the fire and the wood. And, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? And Abraham said, my son, God will provide him a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went both of them together. And they came to the place which God had told him of. And Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order and bound Isaac, his son, and laid him on the altar upon the wood. Let me see verse 10. And Abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. And the angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, here I am. 
And he said, lay not thine hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest God, seeing thou hast not withheld thy son, thine only son from me. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked and behold behind him, a ram caught in a thicket by his horns. And Abraham went up and took the ram and offered him up for a burnt offering in the stead, meaning in the place of his son. And Abraham called the, the name of that place Jehovah Jireh. Amen. And it is said to this day in the Mount of the Lord, it shall be seen. So Jehovah Jireh, the Lord, my provider. Amen. Okay, Abraham obeyed God believed in his word and built altars to make covenants with God and offer sacrifices. Thank you, Lord. Amen. That he requires of us a sacrifice of praise. Yes. Amen. There's no great testing like this. Amen. We see the great work that Abraham did at home by seeing how he and his son Isaac went up to Mount Moriah together to worship. It is obvious Isaac had been well prepared by his father to surrender everything to God, even his own life. You know, after, after he uh, believed that he was going to give up his own life, how much easier was it to just give everything else to God and allow him to take charge of that? Amen. Isn't that true? Yes. Um, this touching story teaches us that we must also take time to educate our own and prepare them for when the time comes when they have to make crucial decisions in their lives. Where can we better develop this time of learning than in the family altar? There you can find everything a family needs to be happy, love, reconciliation, joy, and many blessings more. Yes. I, I just want you to know that at our family altar, we've seen six or seven different people with all their own agendas, with all of the things that they want to do. And I've seen us come together. And you know what, folks? You can do the same thing. Mm -hmm. You can bring, whether they're 21 or whether they're two, you can bring all of them together and you can come together as a family. Mm -hmm. And it's a blessing. You can see your children just sit there and listen and wait for you. They might not get it at first. No. They might be a little bit mm -hmm. like, okay, are we done? Mm -hmm. Don't do that. But after a while, they'll come with their Bibles. Mm -hmm. They'll come prepared. Yes, amen. Remember Rachel used to bring her her um her pens and pencils. Yeah. Right. We've been we've been super busy. And, and listen, we'll tell you, we've been busy building the church a lot. We got involved in a, a, a cell group. Uh, and that took a lot of our time. And so we've been spending so much time that we haven't had as much of our family altar uh, as we should. And so I want you to know, I, I don't say any of this to, to, to condemn, but right. I'm saying we've got to do it. Yes, I know. We've got to do it. We've got to go forward. If we're going to reach the world, we've got to reach our families. Amen. Amen. I, I know that um, for me, what one of the things I enjoyed about um, always being able to do this, mm -hmm. you know, of course, being at home is, is made it easier. But for those people that work, even like you say, a short time, but what you're going to see, I think, as a mom for me, because I'm always trying to meet right. all the kids different needs. I can yeah. my day. What does this child need? And what does that child mm -hmm. need in many more ways than one? Okay. What I'm, what I've learned is there are things that we can tend to that the church can't. Yes. Those very deep seated issues, you know, that you can't just go on a Sunday and go, Oh, you know, you can go to the altar and that's very mm -hmm. important to take your child yeah, and yeah. your family to the altar. But there are things in the home that you can tend to that the church can. And sometimes when we mm. don't do this in our home, we, we might blame the church, we might say, well, they don't have enough of this or they don't yeah. have that, especially now with coronavirus right, um, right, the situation right. that we have. So all the more since, you know, we may not have the opportunity at church for maybe the preacher to say it or something. Yes. But if we can, as a family, tend to the, whatever's going on at home, mm -hmm. you know, like I said, with the scripture or a building up in that way, then God will come right down yeah. into that place. And 
And what a beautiful thing that if our child, once they go out into the world, they're going to remember, I can just get God right here at home. Yeah. I don't have to wait to Sunday. I don't have to yeah. wait till Wednesday. I'm going to meet God here Amen. now. I think the most important thing that you said was, is, is that, that, you, that you, we can attend in our home to things that the church can't do. Yeah. Right. I mean, kindergarten and all those kinds of things. We love to have programs. We, we want to reach our kids. And yes, absolutely. we really do. But coronavirus has kind of wrecked that. And here's the thing. The first duty, as we saw in Deuteronomy 6, is for the family to yes. be doing that by themselves. Yes, and, and, and I tell you what, if they turned on the spigots tomorrow and said, everybody, let's meet. And, it's, you know, you're not going to get coronavirus. We made a mistake. <laughs> no. Anyway. No, that's not going to happen. But even if they said that. Yeah. Right. We yeah. made a big old mistake. We should still be doing this with our family. Amen. We Absolutely. should be still be teaching our young ones, et cetera. Okay. Let me ask these questions because then we're going to be done. Okay. What are the obstacles that prevent you from carrying out the family altar in your home? Busyness. The busyness. Busyness. Yeah. But not here's stopping. not like, stopping, yeah, not stopping. But here's the thing, folks. We still need to do this. We can still find the time. Amen. Yeah, yes. We can still find that time. And I know the Lord is going to help you regardless. Amen. Okay. What steps will you take this week to overcome these obstacles? Okay. So for us, I think it's busyness, right? Mm -hmm. But here's the thing. This is what we're going to do. We are going to schedule a time. Right. Instead of just doing it when we have, well, what, how we usually do it is when we have the need, mm -hmm. but we don't have a, a consistent schedule. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we're going to do it on Thursday night. We're that. going to do it tomorrow night. We're just going to schedule it. That's it. Okay. It is done. All right. That you just that's what we've got to do to. we've got to say it is done we're gonna put this on a certain day we're gonna do it right right and, and remember and, yeah i i remember that we are accountable for what we know mm -hmm. so now that we know um and we're refreshed we knew this but we're refreshed we yeah. are accountable to god to do the deuteronomy command mm -hmm. to not bring i want to add this uh, in Deuteronomy, one thing I wanted to add, but I didn't get to, it says to not bring anything from Egypt, from the world into your home. That, mm -hmm. that becomes a snare. And we don't realize it. We say, oh, there's nothing wrong with it. But by replacing that time, whatever you're going to do with this, mm -hmm. God's going to just honor it and bless us Amen. so much more. And That's our true. children in our loved ones, whoever lives with us, they're just going to be so much more blessed and our home will be kept by those that fear God. Amen. Amen. If you believe that, say amen. Say amen. God bless you, everybody. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. I pray that this lesson has has uh, has has enriched you, it's edified amen. you, that it, that you feel blessed and that you feel a direction going forward. Amen. The Do altar of our home is true north. Amen. All right. Listen. We love you. We look yes. forward to seeing you. Uh, I don't know what's going on with this rain. We'll see what's happening as we're still on. Uh, you know, if you don't hear from me, we'll be outside at 1 p.m. on Sunday. We'll see what the temperature is going to be like. Um, hey, if it rains Saturday night and, and we've got 20 mile an hour winds, uh, we might be on uh, we might be online. But uh, but listen. Until we until we know, until we figure out truthfully what the temperature is going to be, and you know if everything's wet, etc., uh, we're still we're still going to be on Sunday at 1 p.m. outside. And you know this week promises to be warmer than next week. Thank you for all you folks who who soldiered on and, and made it out. God is going to bless you oh, in yes. Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And for those who can't make it, just come online. We yeah. get it. You know, no problem. Amen. We love you. And uh, so listen, the Lord bless you. Let's go ahead and pray. Amen. You ready? ready? 
Lord Jesus, we're so thankful to you. We bless you, God, and we love you. We give you all honor and glory that you brought us here today. And we ask you, Lord, as we leave this place and as we leave this study, God, we ask you, Lord, that the peace of God, the one that surpasses all understanding, fills our homes. God, let us feel the conviction, Lord, to do your will so that our family might be touched. Lord, that we might have generations of those who follow the Lord Jesus Christ. We ask you this in Jesus' Jesus name. name. Amen and amen. God bless you on live stream. God bless you on Zoom. Amen. And we're let everybody know we're going to put a link on um, we're going to put a link on Facebook when we figure it out. <laughs> Amen. Not not no worries. Amen. God bless you all God bless in you. Jesus' name. Amen. Bye bye.